So we're gonna do something a little different. Got some friends here from Texas, and we're gonna cook a trash can turkey. It's about as redneck as it gets, right? Y'all know I'm a redneck anyway. So uh, we're gonna show you all the stuff you need to do it, and uh, step by step, all the way through it, how to inject it and and uh, cook it under a trash can. And uh, it's a 24 pound bird. It's probably gonna take about three to three and a half hours. A 16 pound bird cooks in two hours, but they are very, very good. They uh, very juicy and tender and just fall off the bone. You don't even need a knife to cut them. So we'll get started here in a minute. Need a uh, galvanized trash can. Do not buy the painted cheap version. Get a true galvanized trash can. Uh, and of course use it new. You don't want it. It's been trashing it or anything. You're also going to need a, some kind of a stake. I use a big steel grade stake for construction. Works good. If you have access to one of those or a big piece of rebar, you can even wooden, use a wooden stake on this. Uh, it will not burn up in the oven. Uh, you're going to need a charcoal starter, whether you buy one or homemade. Actually, you need two. I have this big one and I have a smaller one. And uh, I'll use both of them. This is a 20 gallon can. So the rule of thumb is 20 gallon can, 20 pounds of charcoal. 10 gallon can, 10 pounds of charcoal. This is a very big bird, so we wouldn't be able to fit it in a 10 gallon, so we're going to use the 20. Uh, you'll start your both your charcoal starters, and the big one, two-thirds of it, will go around the base of the can, and the other third on top of the can, and we'll show you that in a little bit. So this is the tools you're going to need, plus a roll of heavy-duty aluminum foil. What we're using on this one is a cage injector. It is a marinade of Creole butter. It's one of our favorites. Uh, works really good. It comes with a jar of stuff and a big huge injector needle and you can keep these needles and reuse them, wash them, run through the dishwasher or whatever. So we're fixing to inject this thing. We're going to inject the turkey now with our seasoning. And this is the same thing you do like on a deep fried turkey, you inject them, but we're going to of course cook it in the trash can. The main thing is don't make too many holes. Try to just make one hole and then move your needle in. Well, you can show the them how to hole. do that. So this is a big bird. I'm going to have to Almost make two 24 holes pounds. Because there's no way to inject this whole breast with. That's fine. Just one the more hole. holes you poke in it, the more juice is going to leak out. So you want to try to uh, do it with like one hole, and then what she's doing is pulling it part of the way out, and moving the needle around to different areas. Get as much spread out in there as you can. And we'll use all of this. Now, if you weren't going to use it all, you wouldn't want to recontaminate yeah, your jar. Away. You'd put it in another yeah. jar and use out of that. But I go in the same hole again. You can see it poofing up. Yeah. The timer hole was right there. You use it for part of it. Yeah, I did. Kind of massage I usually it try in. to plug the hole and then so it don't push out when you do that. And don't go straight in, go in at an angle because you go straight in. If it's a small bird, you'll just shoot it in the cavity. Yeah, you'll you go keep through it the all the meaty area. Bird. <laughs> you act like you're enjoying that. <laughs> I'm weird like that. You are weird like that, aren't you? Hey, I was weird my, enough to marry My crazy you. wife, Cindy. I was weird enough to marry you. That's yeah, all I well, have to say. 
Anybody that knows you. See, I didn't used to be weird until I hung out with you. Oh, yes, you did. Don't forget the legs. Huh? I got to do this part of the breast and then the legs. Okay. This one, uh, being 24 pounds, we're probably looking at three, maybe three and a half hours. But I think probably three it'll be done. But we'll pull the can off and check it with a meat thermometer at that point. Hush. You want to try to spread this seasoning out as much as you can everywhere in there, but yet not poke a lot of holes. Try to do like she's doing with one hole and move your needle around. Pull it most of the way out and then stuff at a different angle. And then she massages it into the meat. Okay, uh, I've already showed you the charcoal starters you need, and I've showed you the can. We've got our newspapers and our cooking oil here. What we're going to do, take one full sheet of newspaper and wad up under the small one. We're going to use two full sheets and the big one. We've got a 20 pound can that we're using, so we want 20 pounds of charcoal lit up. One bag of this here is uh, 18 pounds, so I'll have to use a little bit more. Have to get your paper under there. Just regular cooking oil. can be cheap brand, doesn't matter what. Pour a little of that on your paper. And what this does, it keeps that paper burning really good. And you don't have, if you don't use the oil, then you have to stand out here with your lighter or stick and keep stirring underneath there to keep it from going out. That keeps it from doing that. We're going to use this little parcel sack first. Uh, the big one and the little one together is, is right at uh, 20 pounds. Fill those up all the way. That's, actually, it's a little less than 20 pounds. But what you can do after you get this going, and this causes all the charcoals to get burning all white, you pile that around your can, which we'll show you here in a little bit later, and then you can add. Uh, charcoal more out of the bag to it and it will catch itself and keep burning so now take your lighter I get the light in this old wind we got 15 18 mile hour winds here today while we're not flying well let's try this again I went in and got my windproof lighter <laughs> so I should have had to begin with and if it can, it'll light. Well, I'm having a terrible time here with my lighters. It's a deal. It's full. There it goes. Light them newspapers up and the cooking oil that's on them will light up and keep it burning really good. Alright, once those are burning, you can look at your watch. It takes exactly 30 minutes for this to get white all the way to the top. So it's 15 after 1, or quarter of 2, we'll come back out here and our charcoals will be ready. In the meantime, we're going to get our steak ready, put our foil down, and get ready to put the bird on it. Okay, uh, we've got our steak in the ground. showed it to you earlier. It's just a great steak for construction. You can buy these at uh, lumber shops, Meeks, Lowe's, places like that. You can
can use a wooden stake. They're just harder to drive them to the ground. They won't burn up. What we're going to do now, well you want a level, a level place in the dirt. You don't want it in your yard in the grass because it will kill the grass. So we've got a, a round dirt spot here we're going to do. If you want to tear off, well, let's see if I can get it back in here. You want it long enough that the can sets on it. So we're going to tear that off, poke a hole in it, lay it down. Take another piece. Hopefully I don't run out here. Wind's gonna mess with me a little bit. Might make it here. Usually takes four to five pieces of this. I'm really having to fight the wind out here today. Like I said we got 15, 20 mile hour winds most part. Oh, look at there. I think we're going to make it. Alright. Now, got our foil down. Uh, we'll have to take a break in a second. Okay. We got our foil down. You want to circle enough that you can. Kind of sets on the foil so it seals. This is a a butt pan for a butt cake. There's a hole in the middle of it. You can put that over this steak. That will catch all of the juice out of the turkey. You can take that turkey juice in and make gravy. The cool thing about it is it's spicy gravy because of the injection we did. We did a Creole butter so it's kind of Cajun-y. So the gravy comes out real spicy. It's, I didn't think I'd like it at first but it's really pretty good. Alright, at this point you want to take... I'm out of my big foil. So I'm going to have to use a bunch of this for my wife. She's probably not going to be happy with me. But you got to make yourself a ball. If you don't, when you slide the turkey down over here, it will go all the way through. Oh yeah, one other thing I want to do too is I want to wrap this uh, rod since it's all rusty and everything. But just to keep the, I mean, not like we're going to eat the inside of the bird, but it'll keep that clean. Now, we're going to mount this ball right on top of there, just like that. Alright, okay, we got our big bird. You want to put it with the butt down, and then that ball, the foil, will catch up here by the neck and keep your bird from flopping down on the ground. Now, I may have to do a little uh, okay, hang on just a minute. Dale, if I take this off, what do I do with that split mall? It's over there. Will you hammer this steak down just a, a lick or two? I'm going to en enlist the help of my buddy here. Just hammer that down a little bit. That's good. My ball came off and it's stuck up in there. Gosh dang it. You want me to get it out? Hang on, I'll get it. My foil came off. Figure out how I had it on there. There it is. Alright, now let's try this again. Start with the butt. Put the bird down on there. These are insulated rubber gloves that I use for when I do my briskets and turkey and stuff. Just be sure and take them in and wash them good. You don't want to come back out and handle this turkey with raw turkey juice on it. So wash them really good before you come back out and use them again. Alright, now I'm going to see if I can. Actually, the legs are fine. They're hanging down in the pan. If you use a 10 gallon can and it's real short, sometimes you have to tie them up. But this is taller. So we're going to be okay. Other than I ain't going to reach. I'm going to tie a little piece of wire around the wing just to keep it from going out against the can. The wire won't hurt a thing being in there. Now, uh, you know, it's on the floor. Okay, at this point we're ready to set the can over.
You want to make sure it's kind of centered. And you want the whole edge of the can on the foil. Well, I just barely made it right here, but it is. So that will seal and keep all the air and the juices in there. It won't let any heat out. Okay. Oh, that thing's hot. Can't find my grill gloves. I don't know what my wife did with them after we came back from camping. All right. A small can we're going to put on top. Oh, look at that hot, Dale. Yeah. Whew. Okay. We're going to take our bigger one. Oh. Around the base. Now, there goes, the there goes my grass. <laughs> this is the only hard part. It's really hot working with this. Now I've got my shovel here. I prefer this old beat up shovel I've got with a metal handle. It doesn't really matter though. You want to rake all them up as tight as you can get them against the base of the can. Try to get them as even as you can around here. We want to spread these out even on top. Now here's a little trick about charcoal to keep it hot. You've got, after they burn, it will uh, it'll get a, an ash on it and the center is still hot, but if you'll come out every now and then, every hour or 30 minutes, and just kind of tap them with a shovel and knock that ash off, your coals will stay hotter and burn longer. Now, that wasn't quite 20 pounds in these deals, so I'm going to take the rest of this bag, put a little bit more around it. It will start off of what's already burning. This is the worst part because of the heat. Once you get this done, this bird here we're going to let set for three hours before we check it. And actually, at probably two hours, I'll put a little bit more charcoal around it and make sure I keep my heat up. But these raw charcoals will start off of the other ones. You just need to get them up on top. We do this on the river on the gravel bar. That works really well too when we go floating on the Kings River or Buffalo River. We do some guided trips over there sometimes. Take some city folks, cook them a turkey. All right, make sure my little bit of dead grass is out of the way. Should be fine. Okay. We're ready to go inside in the air conditioner and uh, let her set. We'll come back out in about two hours, probably add a little bit more charcoal. And like I say, a 16 pound bird is perfectly done in two hours, but this is 24 pounds. So I'm probably looking at three, maybe three and a half hours. So at two hours, we'll come out and put some more charcoal. At three hours, we're gonna pull the can off. We'll rake our charcoal back, check it with a meat thermometer to make sure it's done. If it's not, we'll put the can back on, rake it back up, and leave it for another hour. We'll be back later. All right, guys. It has been uh, three hours and almost 20 minutes. We're going to pull the can off and check our temperature on our bird. Uh, like I said, a 24-pound bird, I'm not sure how long it's going to take. So we're going to take a shovel, rake these coals back. I did find my grill gloves, by the way. <laughs> it helps because this stuff's really hot. And I'll need them to grab a hold of this can. If you want to rake all your coals back out of the way, and then uh, very carefully, this is very hot, take the can off. Oh my goodness, the bird has fell down in the pan. I only had one other one do that, it split open on top. Looks way done. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, it's been done for a while. I've overcooked it. See, my wife thought it would take four hours, but she was wrong. Okay. 
Hope we ain't burn it up. Normally this does not split open like this. The turkey stays on top of your ball and you can lift it off, but it's I've overcooked it and it's fell down, so I'm not real sure how good it's gonna be, but I'll know next time on uh, what size bird. Alright, we'll get it off of here and see what we got. Alright, we're gonna get this bird off of here if I can. It's trying to fall apart on me and the coals are really hot. The camera's on so close. <laughs> I would do half. Oh. That's how tender it is. Oh my god, that looks good! <laughs> it just falls apart. But normally you can at least get it in the house. Ah! All that meat just fell off that bone right there. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Yum! Put that can back over there. We'll just rake those coals up and let them finish burning up and I'll clean it up tomorrow. Can come out this just as slick and clean. Put the lid back on it. Save it for the next round. All right, let's go eat some turkey. Mm -mm -mm. Looks pretty good, even if it is overdone. Maybe not in the middle. It's not overdone. Turkey is done. We are going to uh, munch out and see how she does. Got a pot of brown beans going over here. This is the juice off of it. I caught a lot of juice in that pan. You can make gravy or whatever you want to out of that. I'm going to put just a little bit of it in. Guys and gals, there you have it. That's how you cook a trash can turkey. Uh, Pretty, pretty redneck, but man, they are good. Mm -mm -mm. Thanks for watching.